Hello everyone and welcome, welcome back to Imperator Rome, the Bronze Age mod, where we are going to play as a new nation today. I have chosen, or been chosen, no wait, that's a wrong game. I have chosen Troy, uh, because I thought Troy is quite interesting, and, well, let's just start the game. That was shit as well. And as always with this mod, we also we start with, with the and as always with this mod we start with the 4.2 kilo year event. Starting a few decades ago, much of the world has been struck by a devastating drought that has caused the collapse of the Cajun Empire, the Egyptian Old Kingdom, and the Liangzhu culture of the Far East. It is a time of social upheaval and destruction of sacred sites and great migrations of people seeking better lands. We must navigate these treacherous waters with great care. And the entire known world is suffering through a several decade long drought, with more severe one in Egypt. Giving us local monthly food to modify of many is 25%. Now the first thing I am going to do is actually take care of my civilization advancements. I am going to take regional dis uh, divisions, giving me three new ideas, which I am going to need, all of them. And I will be taking the military structure because of the 5% morale and the 20% um, fort defense, which I think is actually quite nice. Then I'm going to take care of the omen, the manpower recovery speed, which is always nice. And the early game where we are all kind of city-states is always a very, um, what's it called, very turbulent in military. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to take is I am going to forfeit my bonus for the first few uh, decades and going to go full on military in this respect. So I will be taking the morale of armies, I will be taking the national manpower and I will be taking the siege ability, which I think is currently the best way to start this when you're going to conquer the world. Or, well, at least the your regional equivalent. <laughs> uh, now let's go for inventions, which is even more siege ability. And I want some more supply chains. Yes, very much. And I want starting experience. Very good. Then the next thing I am going to take is the national pop growth. And the aggressive expansion change. Thank you very much. Diplomatic reputation, I do not care too much about. And the pop conversion speed is nothing that matters too much. I also will need some money for units anyway. Now I'm going to disband this unit. This is, this is not going to be very useful for me right now. And we only have three skirmishers, so that we have to change. Let's go ahead and build four uh, spearmen. Get rid of that one, very good. And I think then, after that, we should be set. Now let's take the missions, the matter of uh, Velusa, which is uh, this right big region over here, which we will be, will be the focus of this uh, mission to conquer. Uh, also, let's get a, oh, that's quite good, an 11. And he is an ore master. Well, the ore master is not very useful for me. Chariot discipline doesn't do much for me either. So let's just take the ore master and, well, lacking better options. Now let's go. I, I mean, I, I'm not much of a fan of the, uh, what's it called, of the diplomatic reputation, so I will be going full on warlike approach. The. Minus 10% war score cost is nothing to scoff at, and uh, oh, Impros is going to want an alliance for now. Okay, that should be fine. Can I take an import route? Let's see, there's, oh, there's olives. Now that's not very much useful, though cloth is quite good. Though I should be taking these import routes anyway, because it's going to increase my income. Uh, while the court is actually debating, I forgot to drill my army, but there's nothing I can do about that. Now, that is you. I don't want you as an ally, actually. 
You are going to be a target for my conquests. And what can I... Yes, thank you very much. Now I'm going to export some more stuff for 5% res research points. That's very nice. We long for friendship. No, 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 no. Indeed prosper. Uh, do I have enough political influence? I believe so. Can I go for bellicose stance? Now that gives me even less war score cost, but I think the ca well the claim fabrication is nothing that I need, so I will be going for mercantile stance this time around. And the court has spoken. Only minus 5%. Oh well, better than nothing. Uh, the court demands that Velosa must belong to Troy. Thank you very much. Now that the court has spoken, uh, I think it's actually time to declare war. Now let's see who are my who are possible targets. Now you have four cohorts. You have two other allies. That's 900. Okay. If I were to declare war, yes, very nice. Okay, good. Um, let's go for the for the one that's actually inside Troas proper. So let's go. And declare war on that guy. Now let's call my ally in just in case, because that's quite a sizable alliance. Thank you very much. Confirm. Okay. Though with all my buffs, I think I should be fine, but you'll never know. Let's see. Can I afford the higher maintenance? Oh, yes, I can. Which is giving me even more. Morale, 3.75, very nice. Ooh, well, let's see, can I go there? Well, only... Oh, no, okay. Okay, he's playing, he's going to be playing cat and mouse with me. Well, then I'm going to siege down his capital anyway, so that he cannot actually finish his spearman down there. Oh no, he landed with 900 troops. Whatever am, what am I ever going to do? Troy loses some money or some legitimacy. I think I can handle that. Okay, he thinks he's able to attack me. No. Well, he is able to attack me, but he's not able to win. Someone declared war on me. That's... Wait. Oh no. Someone declared war on my ally. Anyway. That is not very important for me. Now a siege of what's it called? Dardanos is almost done. Well speaking of speaking of which, so let's see if I can actually not if I am actually able to take that guy now. Uh, for some reason I have minus 16 war score. Well, that's probably because of the big alliance this, uh, that this guy has. Yeah, there's the war score ticking up. Very good. Move over there. He currently does not have any morale to speak of. Sadly, we only killed 82 of his troops, but the other stack got wiped. Very nice. And another stack got wiped. I don't know how that happened now. Uh, uh, probably they couldn't be retreating to some... Uh, to their territories, so that's... that. Um, are you willing to actually give me military access? Um... Okay, uh, one of the armies of the allies of the enemy is actually going to walk into my territory. But I don't think that he's uh, yeah, long for this world. I killed even three times as many guys as he did. Am I able to actually also stack wipe him in Prinun? 
No, sadly he can retreat through Dutzlutza. Okay, waiting it out and waiting for the enemy fleet to not blockade my ports anymore seems to have sufficed. I now have currently three reasons for peace and I will be annexing Dardanos. Thank you very much. And of course, as always, do they do not deserve a quarter. I'm not giving any money to them. Where would I be? Now, I'm actually going to go and declare another war immediately and this is actually quite useful for me because his ally is the green guy to his west which also is part of the mission to conquer so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now there's no use in not uh, what's it called calling my allies into the war so if he's got the men to spare, he will come over, and if he doesn't, well, that's fine as well. I should be fine. So let's go ahead, get the siege done with, uh, over with quickly. Who is that? Does Lutza wants an alliance? And you... Uh, for the time being, I think Lamp Lampsakos is the most reasonable ally, but uh, we'll have to wait and see if that's actually the case. And no. Okay, he just attacked me, he lost double the men I did. And he lost even- we. He lost almost four times as many as I did, so that's very nice to see. Uh, Imbros, wait. Apparently you lost a war, I don't know. For some reason our alliance got cancelled, but alas, that doesn't matter. Oh yes, because, yeah, part of the peace deal probably. Uh, my king becomes friends with someone, uh, with the head of a family, that's always nice. Keeping your characters in check. Do I have enough money for an import route? Yes, I do. Let's import grain. Now, I do not need any, but it's generating money, so why the hell not? And this siege is taking longer than I expected it to, but... That's not a problem. Now, the Siege of Uxun is finished and he is moving his troops, now I presume, down over here. Uh, I'm just waiting to see where he actually moves. Okay, what's he doing there? Over, so let's well let's just see if I can uh, oh okay here locked actually that's very nice that's good for me well, okay we engage in battle very good I did not expect it to actually work he's coming with a low morale army as well we did lose almost exactly the same amount of men but that's not a problem. Uh, where is he going? I don't know. Okay, there's another war. Uh, war, another battle. Though I don't know. Oh, that's a stack wipe of those stacks. That's quite fortunate. Well then, this war is going better than expected. I'm actually also quite uh, good on the manpower front. I mean, 500 manpower is not much, but that's certainly not bad after the amount of warring I have done. And the amount of battles, so that's quite nice. Uh, I gain secure. What does that do for me? 
I gain one charisma and my generals are more loyal. Very nice. And the last fort has been siege. Now apparently, after I stack wiped his army, he still had about 1500 manpower. Uh, but that's not going to help him in any way, shape or form now anyway. Um, so let's just get the last territory siege out of the way. Let's invite someone to a banquet, not that that matters. Let's go over there. Prevent him from unseaging that piece of territory. Well, and he did do so, sadly. Okay, now everything has been sieged. Let's sue for peace and well, take everything that I can get for only four aggressive expansion. Now that's not too shabby, is it? Let's just peace out. Our enemies deserve no quarter, of course. And the only thing that now remains for the first mission of Control Troas is to actually colonize this little island down here. Tinedos, it's called. So I will be doing that as soon as I have the manpower. Though I will be needing 250 men first to replenish my army. Uh, let's go and draw my army again. Let's go for the... Omen again. And let's see, can I import something? Uh, I can import wood. Ooh, that's very nice. That's quite good though. I do not intend on taking any... Uh, building any fleet right now, so I will be taking the olives. Well, that's good to know that there's someone in the closer vicinity that produces wood. Slight change of plans. Uh, I see that my neighbor does Luza actually does not have any allies and is actually currently in a war with three of his neighbors. Oh, with three people, not neighbors, necessarily. He has only six cohorts and 500 manpower, and I think I'm actually going to conquer them right now before he gets too strong. And fast expansion in the early game is actually quite useful anyway, and seeing as there is quite a big nation in the south with the name of Natuwasa, I'm actually going to go and, well, conquer him wholly. Completely was the word I'm looking for. Now he's got a little bit of a head start with the siege progress of this fort, but I do have the better siege ability ability, which takes only 23 days. He takes... where can I see that? Apparently I can... Uh, yes, 33. Okay, now I've got some military tradition, but that is something I'm going to have a look at after the war, maybe. Okay, he finished it. He finished his siege down there. Let's just see where he is going to go. Okay, he's sieging this... his capital back, uh, but I don't think that's much of a problem. As I said, he has 33 days per siege phase, where I has 26... well, 35 even. Okay, that's very nice. Someone wants some grain, very good. Let's just export grain. I'm not going to pay for a plot, thank you. Almost done. Almost done, very nice. I don't actually think there's a need to fight his army, we'll see. Come on. I have 99% war score, let's see, what, what will he let me well, I can actually completely annex him. That's very nice. Well, then I see no reason not to do that. I mean, I've got five aggressive expansion, but five on top of that is not very much. 
So let's just do that. As always, my enemies deserve no quarter. And you remove, uh, return to the capital, please. Didn't even need to fight his army, which is quite concerning. Uh, which is quite nice, considering I did not need any manpower for that. Now, considering the military tradition tree, I think I will actually be going the right tree first. Maybe taking this one as well. Because the second one I can take is actually the morale of armies plus 10%, which is quite huge considering I've got a lot of uh, morale boosts already. Now the pop assimilation speed is, n I think, nothing I desperately need, but I mean it's nice to have when we conquer foreign land. Uh, Sigron wants an alliance, that's you. Mm, this is in which area is it? That's the area of Seha. Hmm. For now, we can break that alliance later anyway. Um, the way uh, it's because, well, I'm going this path because of the morale of armies, mm -hmm. as well as the siege ability, which I think is actually quite nice on top of what I have uh, on top of what I have already got. And also the tribal union minus maintenance cost and minus 20% war score is quite quite great. Two diplomatic relations is not very necessary. Um, which is quite nice. On the left tree later is the... Um, where is it? The X-Men discipline is quite nice. The manpower is very good, but also the um, army morale recovery and the spearman defense. This is nothing... also nothing to uh, forget. Now oh, I'm almost at 900 manpower and... Um, able to colonize Tinnados, which is going to enable me to finish the first two missions, which is Control Troas, it's uh, my capital region, thank you very much, and which gives me also the mission to integrate Troas, giving me 10 political influence, which is not that important. Now the next mission is actually something I have almost done. There's and uh, this one needs to be colonized and this little territory over there needs to be conquered though this guy is allied to the Natuwasa hegemony down there and I will need to conquer these this province from these two people but I do gain some more citizens so that's also quite a nice reward for that mission um now this is something that I have already uh, worked towards, though I need to colonize three more provinces for that. Oh, and I need to colonize also this one province. Okay, I think that has to be it for, Nana uh, for today. Uh, in the next episode I am actually going to go and declare war on Koila uh, for his four territories within the Dardanos province to get me a step closer to the next mission. Now, sadly, he uh, sadly for him he is allied to Ainos, which is actually uh, his ally not being a problem. And then I will have to declare war on this guy, who is um, allied to Alatra. So this is going to get two stone, uh, two birds with a s with one stone for this for the mission for this region here, and probably. If uh, for a later mission for this region over there, so I think that's quite a reasonable plan of progression. I will, for now at least, not be taking any territories in the European side of this uh, region, because they are of a different culture and of a different um, region, and I think that's going to hamper my progress for the time being, so I will be focusing on same religion, same culture regions first, and then maybe keep those different cultures for uh, future expansion plans. But all that it is, that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode, I hope you will be sticking around for the, for the next one, and I will see you then. Goodbye.